Hey everybody, it's Scott from SertMedia.com and today I'm going to be going over the WordPress Smush plugin by WPMU Dev. WordPress Smush is a plugin that's been around since really forever. It's a free image compression tool that you can use for your website. Very similar to U Image Optimizer, but it has a different approach. Install it, you go plugins, add new, and then you can search under the popular tab or you can just type in the word smush and it will be the first suggestion that appears and then you'll click install and then we'll activate it so wp smush or as it's now just known as smush is a relatively simple plugin with some cool free features but it's not full-fledged so when you install it, you'll be given this little pop-up screen and it'll go through a setup window. And you can either click begin setup or you can just skip it. I normally just skip it because we'll be going through the settings manually for this video. It'll run through and it'll do a check to see if there's any images that could be used that could use some compressing. And then you'll be taken to this dashboard. You'll get a ad to say upgrade to the pro version and we're going to dismiss that. So the free version by default only compresses images losslessly. It will not affect image quality, so it can have a very minimal effect on total image size, but it's better than nothing in all images unless you need the extra metadata for some reason or you're selling them, then they should go through some form of lossless compression. So when you begin, you will have this bulk smush page, which will allow you to compress all the images in your media library. We're going to skip that, and then we're going to come back to it. So it will, by default, compress all image sizes. Image sizes being the thumbnails that WordPress generates. Thumbnails are used in WordPress for different containers. That way you're not sending a full-sized image to a container that doesn't need it. There's no reason to serve a 2000 by 2000 sized image in a 200 by 200 resolution square. So all images by default should be compressed, especially if you're doing lossless compression. The automatic compression will automatically compress your images on upload. If for some reason you don't want them to do that, you can disable it. I recommend that you do it. That way you just set it and you forget it. Metadata, you should strip your metadata. It's unnecessary, and it's really the only benefit you're gonna get from using this plugin. Now, then there's the image resizing functionality. Now, this is an interesting bit of functionality that you need to understand before you enable it. What will happen is you'll click this option, and then it will allow you to set the max width and max height of the images that are uploaded. So it'll go to 2048 and 2048, and you can change just whatever you want. This will be the largest image that you're able to upload before resizing. So if you upload a 4000 by 4000 resolution image, it will be resized to 2048 by 2048, compressed, and then WordPress will regenerate those images like it normally does. This will not help you really in much of a performance aspect. The reason for that is the full-sized image will very seldomly be used. And if it's being used, you should have it resized to the specific container that it's calling for it. Most of the time in WordPress, you're using some variation of a thumbnail, whether it's the large or a grid thumbnail and the image resizing has been done already. This functionality will just resize the original upside, ups, the original uploaded image. So if you upload a 4K resolution image, it will resize that to 2048 by 2048. This is good and bad. It's good because if for some reason you're using that one image in a really bad spot, it will resize it to a much smaller size and thus increase your load time, reduce the amount of bytes, and that's about it. 
The only other thing that this does is it will save you on web disk space because you're not uploading full-sized images and they're being resized on upload. That original image will no longer be large and taking up a large number of bytes. The downside is if you need that large scaled image, this will interfere with that. It's a give and a take. It's a very niche feature. Most of the time when people approach me and they say, well, how big should I upload images for my blog? And then I just say, I normally upload 1920 by 1080 images. And then my theme resizes the image for its featured image spot and so on and so forth. There's not a whole lot of direct use for this feature, but it's, it's a niche and useful feature. The next thing you have is directory smush. Directory smush allows you to choose a directory, maybe a theme or a plugin, where images were bundled and you can compress those. This is good because it allows images that are not included in the media library to be compressed. U Image Optimizer, for instance, already has this functionality. It'll allow you to declare extra libraries to check, and it has straight compatibility with a lot of plugins out of the box. Integrations. The integrations feature is kind of gimmicky and pretty useless if you're on the free version. What this will do is the first one will just show smush stats and Gutenberg blocks. They'll tell you not nothing that you'd really ever care to use effectively. The Amazon S3 support will allow images to be compressed and Smush will detect those assets, remove the files. If you're using WP offload and push them to an S3 bucket, the next gen gallery, it will compress the images that next gen gallery creates for its resizing. That's a handy feature. And then there's the WP bakery page builder. It will allow smushing image, Smushing images resized in the WordPress Bakery page build editor. You'll effectively just be able to compress images for the page builder as you're uploading and building the page. Then you have the lazy load functionality. This feature is a good thing to have. It's very common optimization plugins now because everything that can be lazy loaded in 2019 probably should be. What this feature will do is it will take an image, it will change it so its markup gets modified. For instance, this is data source, the URL, and then the source attribute is that because it reloaded. But if you go, it's a base64 encoded image and it's lacy loaded them. So this will save you on bytes and improve your overall load time. This is especially true for mobile devices. You can select the media types, the output locations, the display animation. You can set it to a spinner. That's kind of cool. You can upload your own file. This is actually a really cool functionality is being able to upload the placeholder image. I like this functionality. Otherwise, simple, sweet, to the point, great lazy load functionality. Post types, it will allow you to enable it or disable on a per post type basis. For instance, if you don't want it enabled for your front page, you can do that, or you can exclude specific URLs or classes and IDs. In my opinion, every single lazy loading plugin should have the ability to specify class IDs to be lazy loaded in to not be lazy loaded in its user interface. Some very popular plugins do not have that functionality and those know who they are. Under the scripts, you can set it to load in the footer or the header. You should really not ever load it in the header. There's no benefit of putting it in the header, load it in the footer. That's why it's a default. I'm gonna turn this functionality off, but now it's there. Under the CDN functionality, if you're using the pro version, you can use their image CDN feature. I'm not gonna go into it because it's a pro feature. Then there's the image resize detection. This is a cool feature. 
So you'll click detect and show incorrectly sized images. And what it'll do is it'll go to your website and it'll highlight them as yellow if they're oversized. And then you click this little button and it says, hey, this image is oversized. It could be 515 by 294 instead of 1400 by 800. Sorry, I was reading the wrong image. This image is undersized. It's 800 by 900 when it should be 960 by 1080. It, undersized images do happen, but in this case, the image looks fine. An undersized image is a good way of indicating if that image is too small, that it's becoming a detriment to the image quality. An oversized image, like is also happening here, it's suggesting it twice, so maybe there's a bug in how it works. I'm, th I'm thinking it has to do with the source set possibly, but nevertheless, an oversized image should be resized. That way mobile devices and or any device, desktop, tablets, are getting served an image that's respected to the container size to conserve on bytes. And then I personally disable this functionality. Then there's the ability to bulk restore. Use this feature to restore your image thumbnails to the original state. What this will really do is I believe it just goes through and it regenerates the thumbnails because the original image is not optimized. You have to clear your cache afterwards, but it should show up. And then there's the usual settings window. You can set the translation functionality, the color accessibility, usage tracking. I don't care if it's on or off. You, may, you might. Data, you could choose how you want to handle the image restoration. To restore an image, you can just go back to the tools section. You can choose on the, inst on the uninstall to delete the data or keep the data that way in case you reinstall the plugin. I recommend deleting data if you're going to be deleting a plugin. That should just be the default behavior in my opinion. That way databases stop getting so cluttered, which happens so often in the WordPress space. And then you can reset it to the factory settings or the default settings that the plugin comes as. And then the API status, you can just use this to check the WordPress Smush API to make sure that your server is able to communicate with it and thus have the images sent to their server to be compressed and then re-downloaded. And that's everything you need to know about WP Smush. It's a clean, effective, free image compression plugin. I would say if you're on a host that doesn't allow you to use uImage Optimizer, this is going to be your next best option in terms of lossless compression or you could go spring for a premium image compression tool otherwise wordpress smush if you have any questions about it you can ask me in the comment section below i'll try to help you otherwise you can go to the wordpress.org support forum page and the developers will be able to assist you there thank you so much for watching and goodbye